Hey YouTubers, welcome back to Desert Have a Garden. I am here in my low desert garden on a beautiful morning in July and it seems like we have a monsoon storm coming in. It smells of rain, the clouds are overhead and a little bit dark, but it still feels like it's going to be a great day here in the low desert, but still hot for sure. And what I'm showing you here is my mullein plant. And as I had shown you in a previous video, when the heat came on, this poor plant wilted all the heck. And as you can see, it has bounced back. It looks great. This is a very hardy plant for our low desert hot climate. As long as it gets its regular watering, it does just fine. I have not had shade cloth or anything else over it, so it just looks wonderful. Um, today I am going to show you how to harvest it and dry it. It's really very simple, um, so we'll go ahead and get started. First, I use just an old cookie sheet, um, one that you don't really care about, and I simply break off the leaves at a low point, you know, pinching them off with your nail, and then I lay them flat on the cookie sheet. And that's how I allow them to dry out. Um, here the moisture in the air is very low so they dry super quickly. I find that it only takes um, really within two weeks they are completely dry. So um, it'll depend on what the humidity is where you're living and what the moisture is as to how quickly they'll dry out but just leaving them out in the air will be a very effective way of allowing them to dry. Now when you come across leaves that are already kind of um, maybe ripped or torn or brown like this, put these in a separate pile. You can thin them out of here so the plant can keep growing and putting on nice new leaves, but you don't want to use this for your tea just because it's um, already kind of drying out and not the best quality. So when you dry these leaves, they will actually be green and look nice even though they're dry, they won't be brown. So I go around and I get the leaves that are on the outsides of each of the plants. So this is many plants in here. This is not just one plant. Um, but you go around the outside of each little plant and pull off the bigger leaves and allow the center leaves to stay on. And see, here's more brown. So these ones we don't want. You can kind of just get those out of the way. And you just will put them in a nice thin layer like this. You can harvest as many as you like, but you don't want them stacked up. If you stack them on each other, um, they won't dry out as well, and you definitely don't want to get anything that's going to be moldy or um, you know, grow stuff on it that won't make for good tea. Now that you have the leaves inside and in a single layer on a pan, you can do as many pans as you like. I like to keep some of these leaves rotating. So I like to thin them out periodically and dry them for a couple weeks and then I can process them into a Ziploc bag or I can crunch them all up like I will show you in the next step and then you can get another pan to start drying. So if you live in an area where you think the humidity is going to be too high and they won't dry out naturally just like this in the air, you can use a dehydrator and you just set the dehydrator on the low temperature and allow the circulation of the air to help dry them out a little more quickly. So you can do that as well. Um, personally, I just like to do it this way because it doesn't require any effort or checking on and no additional electricity or anything. Now that our leaves are dry, and you can tell that they're dry when they make this sound. I mean, really, dry leaves are pretty apparent. And you can see that the leaves have maintained their green color, and it's actually really a fuzzy plant, and I don't know if you can see it in the image there. How fuzzy they are. But they're really kind of fun. Um, they're fun to touch and everything. But next you can start beginning to prepare them for tea by crumpling them up. And you can do this really simply just with your hands, kind of breaking them and crumbling them, ripping them up. Or alternately you could use a mortar and pestle if you have one. Um, but this way is just as effective 
so you get it broken down into small pieces. Now the tea is used generally for respiratory ailments. So if you have a cold, a cough, a sore throat, um, I've heard it's also good for COPD. In our home, there's no shortage of colds and coughs. So that's what my interest is in this. Um, it is also supposed to be antibacterial and help with uh, topical treatments if you make it into some sort of um, an oil or something like that. You have to excuse the background noise today. My washing machine always sounds like it's preparing for takeoff. You can remove big stems if you don't want to keep them in there. It really doesn't matter if you get them broken up. You can leave them or you can just throw them out, the hard stems. Now, in order to prepare the tea, you want to take about one tablespoon of the dried leaves and you can put it into a cheesecloth in order to steep it um, or you can use um, a handy tea steeper. I have a little manatee, called the manatee, get it? So funny. Anyways, so you just stuff the leaves down in there and if some escaped you can just add a little bit more. Okay, and put the top on so it's all secured. And there is my tea infuser. His cute little arms hang on the side of the cup. And the next thing we'll do is bring water to a boil. You can do that either in a pot or a tea kettle. How can I tell you that you can also use cheesecloth without showing you? So here's a little piece of cheesecloth. And you take a tablespoon of your tea leaves, place it in the cheesecloth, and you gather up the edges just forming it into a little pouch. So you see your little pouch there. And then you take a string. I'm just using regular thread that you would sew with. And you tie this up. Actually, you need to set this down, I think. <laughs> You can see why a tea infuser is more convenient, but using cheesecloth does have its benefit in that um, cheesecloth, usually you won't get as much um, debris, I guess you can call it, inside your teacup. With a tea infuser, you may find some small leaves in there. Okay, so we've got our little ball of tea inside cheesecloth, and that will go inside a mug. With the water boiling, I turn off the heat and pour water into the mullein tea. So you either have it wrapped in cheesecloth over in this first mug, and in the second mug, I have it in the manatee tea infuser. You will allow this to steep for 10 minutes in order to get its full benefit. You can see this makes a very light tea, as some herbal teas are. Um, it's much lighter than a black tea and even some green teas. So at this point, after you have steeped for 10 minutes, you can go ahead and remove your tea infuser out. And you can see that there are some leaves floating around in there and they sink to the bottom. It doesn't bother me, but some people don't like that. So here is your answer using the cheesecloth. Um, you can add some honey if you'd like to have honey uh, sweet in your tea. I personally don't like to have any sweetener in my tea. I drink a lot of green tea and this tea I actually find has its own kind of natural sweetness um, more so than kind of the bitterness of a green tea. So let's give it a try. Tea is intended to be enjoyed slowly, so take a load off and sip on your tea, relax, and enjoy the health benefits of this mullein tea. I hope you enjoyed this video and found something useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more updates in the future.